An investigation is currently underway after students at a Beverly Hills middle school used artificial intelligence to create fake nude images of their classmates, bringing the dangers of AI front and center with many worried now about how to navigate this world and also protect their children. We have two guests joining me right now to talk about this even further. further. Defense, Defense attorney Rachel Fisay and professor of technical communication and VP for research, research at Texas State, State University, Dr. Amy Kendall Roundtree. Thank you both so much for joining me. I really, really appreciate it. Um, of course, this is a very serious topic. I want to go right into the possible consequences of using AI in a malicious way, even if they're minors. Amy, let's start with you. So the consequences are, uh, well, first, thank you for having me. And the consequences are, as you'd expect, for children at this developmental stage. Um, they include emotional trauma. Um, they include um, even developmental um, challenges that might, and social challenges that might result as a product of this. Um, and in my work in the World Economic Forum's AI children uh, for, for children toolkit really um, it demonstrates this case really demonstrates how it's very important for technologists and folks who design these technologies to really be thinking about their potential implications for children. Um, the work that I did with the World Economic Forum really involved making sure that all AI, not just deep fakes and, and other technology are fair, uh, ethical, inclusive, responsible, safe, and transparent. Um, these technologies abound. It's very easy to, to download fake app or deep art or these other technologies that can create these um, deep fakes. Um, and then to have them deployed in or have them used in a school setting or have them used um, by young adults who don't really understand the long, t long tail consequences, I think that this case is a perfect example of. Well, and that's something that I thought about right away was just the mental health aspect of this. When you talk about the consequences that middle schoolers could face, not really realizing the damage they're doing uh, by actually doing this, but also the bullying aspect of it for someone who's on the receiving end. Uh, Rachel, I want to bring you in with this one, too. We know technology, of course, advances so quickly. The law is still developing. So what's being looked at currently to offer protection? Could companies in the future be held accountable to some capacity? Capacity. Well, in this instance, uh, we would look to the school code of conduct. So it, this instance would start there where you're in middle school and children think they're playing a prank, but it's a very dangerous prank. And it's using AI and it's using what federally at this point could be considered child pornography because the federal laws have moved somewhat swiftly to attempt to address deep fake AI, and now it doesn't particularly matter if there's real children in the pictures, uh, if they're sexually explicit, or if they are fake children, if they look real. So if these were adults, if this was to be prosecuted and gone up, uh, they could be federally prosecuted for child pornography charges, which are, are have huge consequences. Our state legislatures are working to do similar things in California as it relates to deep fake AI and sexually explicit material. How long do you think it will take to get something in place to actually add that protection that now, especially here at home with this incident at Beverly Hills Middle School, parents, students and teachers are trying to figure out how to navigate and move forward? It's a difficult landscape and right now they have tools that would relate again to the school code of conduct i'm sure this is a violation and it certainly is it starts with bullying as we discussed and it starts there are stalking there are things right now that no matter whether it's ai or not they can use and now the legislatures that they are seeking to pass this legislation federally this type of thing passed swiftly with bipartisan support we think it'll happen in 2024 as it relates to california as well, uh, and it, that is addressing these types of specific issues. Okay, now Amy, back to you on this one. Um, curious what you would suggest for parents to look out for. How are we able to have these conversations with our kids and students, and how are we as adults even able to differentiate all of this? Excellent question. It is a work in progress. 
um, experts, educators, researchers, developers, all are really thinking long and hard about these about these very questions. Um, there are some uh, organizations, MIT has a center and others that um, are really working on digital literacy. Um, your viewership is welcome also to download the free AI uh, for Children toolkit that I uh, helped write with the World Economic Forum. Uh, they provide some really good advice about how to educate yourself as a family and then also educate your child about being careful about using these technologies. Um, I also believe that a part of what we're seeing is a product of what philosophers of technology will say, whether or not the uh, technology is just an extension for us or is it sort of creating the worst in us, making making us do things we would normally do. Some of, um, I, I wonder the motives, not that it matters, I, I suppose, in terms of the law, but I wonder the motives of these of these young adults. And I wonder um, if their families, if, they're, if this isn't another, um, a means to an end or another way that families need to really pay attention to their children and pay attention to what what technologies their children are using. Um, it isn't just about the technology, which is troubling. It's troubling in the political landscape. It's troubling in education. Um, it's troubling in terms of um, trying to maintain a modicum of or, or some form of um, uh, accuracy in the information that we deliver as media, as researchers. So, so deep fakes are very troubling. But it, it really does bespeak a longer um, longer questions, more uh, lingering questions um, that parents have about um, instilling ethics in their children, generally speaking, mm -hmm. and ethics around technology specifically. Um, it might be the case that there were other um, problems that if, if parents were to have considered um, even before this child decided to use the technology, uh, you know, those are those are questions that parents always have to grapple with. I have to Just, grapple with as a mother myself. Yeah. Um, so, so that's really important to consider, not just that the technology is doing harm and that there are resources mm -hmm. available to educate yourself about deep fakes, what, why, how, how it is the technology works, how you can tell the difference between them, but also um, letting the technology be a, a, a opener for a longer conversation about the kind of person you want to raise in the world. There's just so many layers to this entire conversation. Ladies, we ran out of time. I'm so sorry, but thank you both so much for talking to me and spending time on this really, really serious topic. I really appreciate it. Thank, thank you. Pleasure. Thank you.